What is up, Fabrication Nation? On this episode of the Fab Forms, we get the goose running. Or we try to get the goose running. As I talked about in a previous video, I had to modify the MSD distributor to make it into a cam sync. Really, that's the only thing the distributor does is a cam sync and transfer spark through the distributor cap itself. I think when I left you off last time, I had to buy a new distributor, starter, and some other things. Well, the MSD distributor had to be modified, and I knew that when I bought it, but man, there's nothing worse than cutting up a brand new $250 distributor. Anyway, long story short, I'm not going to go into the details on what I did to this thing. If you want to modify one of these MSD distributors to be a cam sync, you can find instructions all over the internet. It's pretty simple. Very basically, all I did was took off all the mechanical advancement stuff on this distributor and then welded it. So it has no way of advancing or retarding anymore. Actually, I don't guess it retarded before, but it has no way of advancing mechanically or any other way. I've basically welded it and it's stuck now. The other thing is on these distributors, they have these, uh, these little tabs that hang out and they have eight of them for, an eight, you know, for a V8. And every time it passes this little magnet, it sends a signal through to your MSD box or whatever it is you're using as your ignition. And that's basically what tells the MSD box to fire the coil. All right, it fires the coil, power comes up, goes through the distributor to the right cylinder based on where it's where it is timed on the distributor. If that makes sense. I didn't need all that on this thing. This is just going to be a cam sync. All this thing is going to do is tell the brain where the beginning of the combustion cycle for you know for all cylinders is. Does that make sense? All this thing is going to do is tell the brain that number one is getting ready to fire. And then it knows that it can go through the complete firing order once it's done and this thing will trigger it again. You know, go through the firing order and then it'll trigger it again. And that basically just lets it know where it's at in the cycle. It will still transfer spark through the distributor cap itself, but that won't have any function as far as timing or uh, anything really. All it does is just transfer it through to the spark plugs. All the rest of the stuff will be done with the box, the brain for the car. All right, so without going into really great detail, the way that these standalone computers work is you all it needs is a signal for the cam sink, okay, which is going to be for most of them it's 60 to 65 degrees before top dead center, only one time before the number one piston or number one cylinder. So it knows when the cam sink sends it a signal, and it's usually like I said 60 to 65 degrees before top dead center of the compression stroke of the number one cylinder. Once it gets that signal, it says or it knows, all right, number one cylinder. It's coming up on compression, it's, we're getting ready to fire it, and then after that it knows the sequence for the rest of them, all the way through eight. 
And then this thing will fire again, letting you know, letting it know that we're back to one. That's the only function of the cam sync. The crank trigger itself is what tells the box where it's at in the, in the timing cycle. Because it's one that actually fires, fires the plugs, okay? So the crank trigger goes down on the crank. It's got four magnets on it. You only have four combustion events per a revolution of the crankshaft. So the camshaft moves half the speed of the crankshaft, if that makes sense. So you've got four magnets on it, they're evenly spaced, and it basically just tells you when you're about to fire each cylinder, okay? Now you set that thing up at 50 degrees before top dead center. And the reason you do that is because it's basically telling the box, okay, this is 50 degrees before top dead center, I'm gonna let you handle when you're actually gonna fire the plug. And that way you can basically modify the timing within the box any way you want to, and the box itself will determine the timing. Not the distributor, not the crank trigger, it won't be anything mechanical, it's all digital. So it just tells it, okay, we're at 50 degrees before top dead center, the box may wait another 30 degrees before it fires, and then your timing at that particular time is 20 degrees. Or it might wait 10 degrees, or 15 degrees, or whatever it is, the box can determine that, and it can change it infinitely throughout the load and RPM range. Whatever you want, you can go in there and plug it in and you can make your timing, whatever you want it to be. Makes sense? Hope I don't lose you. The cam sync on these setups also lets the brain know where the injectors are firing compared to where the cylinders are in the compression or you know induction or exhaust stroke or whatever it is it basically will tell the brain where the motor is in its cycle in order to specifically inject the injectors when they want to it also allows the brain to inject more fuel or less fuel in particular cylinders if you want to the same thing with the timing so i can run like 20 degrees timing in all the cylinders except for one. I could maybe pull some timing out of that one cylinder or add some timing in that one cylinder or some fuel. So the cam sync is a great thing to have. It basically allows the brain to run sequential, which is it knows where each cylinder is. It can tune for each cylinder individually. There are setups that would do what they call bank to bank where it doesn't do that. It doesn't know what cylinder's firing. It just knows when to fire it. And then it basically fires the injectors bank to bank. Okay, so it'll fire all four on this side, and then it'll fire all four on this side. It just does that back and forth. It doesn't really know which cylinder is what. It just knows the banks themselves. Now, had a lot of people comment when I was talking about doing this setup on this car. I had a lot of people say, why don't you just go with X box? You, it's easy. You don't have to do this, whatever. Well, the truth is, no matter what box you go with, if it does sequential, tuning, meaning per cylinder, if you can change the timing individually per cylinder or change the injection individually per cylinder, you're going to have to have a cam sync, you're going to have to do the same modification, it doesn't matter. Even if you go coal on plug, you still have to have a cam sync. That box is going to have to know where it's at in its cycle, regardless of whether it's distributor or coil on plug or anything. So, going with another setup wouldn't have changed anything, I still would have had to do this modification. I still would have had to create created some kind of cam sync, whether it's this way or another way. So that, that was kind of null and void. And as far as these boxes go, guys, I've used a ton of these things. I've used the Big Stuff 3, I've used the Mega Squirt, I've used the Holly setup, um, seen a lot of stuff on the, the Fast setup back in the day. To be honest with you, they all do the same thing. I mean, you know, one might have one extra ish, one extra feature than this one or that one but most of the features they offer nowadays are not necessarily features that are must-have features they don't really have much to do with tuning a lot of times it's data acquisition those are the features that you're getting or data acquisition the big stuff three is an older standalone but when you look at them they all do the same thing i mean literally i can take this box i can tell what i want the a the afr the air fuel ratio to be in any particular load versus RPM scenario and it will self tune it and put it there within a percentage that percentage I can basically tell 
You know, if I want it to tune within 40%, within 20%, the box will do that. I mean, I don't see how you can get any better than that. It's all on the tuner anyway. So the tuner is what tells the box what to do, and the box just does it. All the boxes do the same thing. Not only that, this thing will control multiple fuel pumps. It'll control up to 16 injectors. It'll actually switch from one set of injectors to another at a certain load. Um, if you want to run like a small injector for cruising and then have it roll over into a really large injector under boost, it'll do that. It controls the fans based on temperature. I can basically set what the temperatures I want the fans to kick on and off. Um, it does all kinds of transmission controls. This particular box has all kind of data logging uh, capabilities. It'll tell you uh, drive shaft uh, revolutions, RPMs. It'll tell you turbo shaft, the actual shaft inside your turbos. It will tell you how many RPMs that thing is spinning if you want it to. It will do traction control. This thing has a G meter that you can put in there. Tell you how many G's you're pulling. It will, it will data log fuel pressure. It'll data log oil pressure. It'll data log brake pressure, it'll data log. Just about anything you want it to data log, it will do it. So, I don't know. People say you need to go with this because that's the best. You know what? I don't really buy it. Anyway, it's enough said on that. Let's put this thing back together, put it back in the car, and uh, we'll be one step closer to getting this thing fired up. There's your little secret if you didn't already know. Little yellow weather stripping adhesive. Little 3M weather on your valve cover gaskets. Just glue them right to the valve covers. They'll never come off. Every time you take those things on and off, that seal will never break and uh, you'll be good to go. I'll link up the kind I use in the description. I also needed to weld up one last piece of the induction. This piece was the part that goes on the inside of the car. It's stainless, so I had to back purge and that actually took some time.
Then really the only things that were left was to put some fuel in it and clean out the lines. So basically I put the fuel in, I broke some of the lines loose up front, put them in a separate fuel container, run the pumps, cycle the pumps a little bit, and was hoping that you know I could get any trash that might be in the lines out of them before I hooked them up and ran them through the regulator and through the injectors and back to the back to the tank. And then she was ready to fire up. So I wasn't 100% sure that she was going to fire on the first try. I was confident in my ability to put the car together the way that it should be. The tune-up was in the box. All the electronics were set up the way that they were supposed to be. So I didn't feel like there was any reason that it shouldn't fire. But sometimes you can never tell. I mean, this has been a long project, as a lot of you guys know. And I've been very meticulous along the way, but that doesn't mean that I don't forget something. And I think I've gotten it buttoned up well enough to start. Let's see if she'll breathe. Boom. She didn't let me down. She fired up on the first shot. Sounds amazing. I'm sure that the microphone and the YouTube sound doesn't do it any justice. It sounds really good. I've still got a ton of work to do on this thing. I still got to do the trans cooler and lines. Um, still got to put some more transmission fluid in it. Got to change the oil and the oil filter. As you know, the break in period will be with the Fram and the, the old oil. And then I'm going to switch over to some synthetic. The purulator. I mean, this thing doesn't even have any kind of coolant in it yet. So that's why I haven't been running it very long. I'll usually run it through a couple heat cycles without coolant before I put the coolant in there. So I still got to do that. Still got to figure out what I'm going to do as far as exhaust goes. I was kind of thinking maybe just run the stuff out the front, but it's pretty loud. So I don't know. I'm probably going to have to do some kind of exhaust out the rear. Uh, may if I have to go all the way out the rear, I may try to make something that's super quiet and really, really kind of escalate this uh, streetcar sleeper mode. I guess is what you'd call it. Still got to order a drive shaft for the car. Still have to do a lot of the interior panels. Obviously, it's going to need a windshield in it. Um, I got a lot of stuff still to do, so. Anyway, there you go. It's one big step in this thing. It's kind of the monkey off my back. Y'all stay tuned. I will be posting videos occasionally on the updates of this. Probably going to switch over to the C10. Um, I also have another big project coming for you guys. Probably going to go pick it up this weekend, so that'll be interesting. But going to kind of transition away from this thing. Going to start working on the Bibster. Like I said, I got a new project, so you'll see that, and may actually do a couple little things with the Black Pearl. As always, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son.